The instrumentation technique now is demonstrated for an L1 anterior vertebral fracture with a fractured posterior wall, type A3. Shunt screws will be placed in one vertebra above and one below the fracture. In L2, the entry point for the pedicle is at the intersection between the horizontal line bisecting the transverse process and a vertical line tangential to the lateral border of the superior articular process. The pedicle awl is used to open the posterior cortex at the entry point. The screw hole is completed using the pedicle probe. If necessary, this step can be done under image intensification control. The head of the pedicle probe is held in the palm of the hand, and for maximum safety, both hands are used. The depth of the pedicle hole can be directly measured on the probe. In T12, the lower part of the transverse process is removed with a rongeur. It opens the cortex at the ideal entry point. The pedicle hole is made using the pedicle awl. The hole is completed with the pedicle probe. The correct position of the holes can be checked under image intensification using K-wires. The shunt screws are inserted into their holes. It's advisable to angle the shunt screws approximately 10 degrees medially. This angle helps in mounting the rods with posterior clamps, which will be applied medially. A 6 mm hard rod with two clamps is inserted over the shunt screws. The rod is applied medial to the shunt screws adjacent to the spinous processes. The second rod is positioned on the other side. At this point, the four clamps must be secured to the rods using the 6 mm wrench. This maneuver is mandatory to avoid fracture fragments protruding into the spinal canal during the following fracture reduction. The 11 mm socket wrenches are applied caudally and under image intensification a lordosis is created. Then the nuts are tightened to maintain the position of the shunt screws. The socket wrenches are now mounted cranially, and with image intensification the lordosis is completed. Here too the nuts are tightened to maintain the position of the shunt screws. The rod holding forceps is placed on the central part of the rod between the two clamps and locked. The spreader forceps is positioned on the rod between the rod holder and the clamp. The clamp is loosened. Distraction is applied to reconstitute the vertebral body. The clamp is locked with the 6 mm wrench. The opposite side also is distracted. The fracture reduction now is finished and the ligamento taxis can be observed on the model. The first cross-link clamp is applied on the 6 mm rod. The 3.5 mm rod is inserted into the clamp. The second cross-link clamp is positioned 
and the rod is inserted into the clamp. The small screwdriver is used to tighten the cross-link clamps to the rod. The instrumentation is completed by trimming the shunt screws with the bolt cutter. The anterior defect that is left after fracture reduction can be seen on the model. A possible reconstruction of the vertebral body is a transpedicular bone graft. For this technique, a 6 mm drill bit, a funnel for cancellous bone graft, and the appropriate impactor are available. The pedicle of the fractured vertebra is prepared with the pedicle awl and the pedicle probe. The hole is then enlarged with the 6 mm drill bit. The funnel is introduced until the stop. Cancellous bone is pushed into the vertebral body using the impactor.